We're going to go in depth now on the latest indictment against the former president with the Target 12 investigators. We're joined live in studio now by Tim White. And Tim, the thing that really stood out to me and a word that we're hearing a lot today is RICO yes. for racketeering. You've covered a lot of mm -hmm. RICO cases over the years. Walk us through what people should know about this type of case. Yeah, well, absolutely. President Richard Nixon signed the RICO law into law in 1970. And RICO is short for the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. The law was put on the books as a tool to dismantle mafia families across the country. A federal RICO case has two key parts, pattern and enterprise. To prove a pattern of law breaking, federal prosecutors have to show at least two crimes occurred from a list of about three dozen potential violations. Then they have to show those crimes were part of an ongoing criminal enterprise. Now, the law worked very well at decimating mafia families across the country. States began passing their own versions of a RICO statute. There are 33 state RICO laws now among them, Georgia, as we see in the Trump case, and right here in Rhode Island. Now, an interesting tidbit here, the U.S. Senator who wrote the RICO statute, an Arizona Democrat named John McClellan, was a movie buff and loved the 1931 gangster film Little Caesar. One of the main characters in that movie was a mobster named Rico, who, now spoiler alert here, died in a gunfight with police in the film. So it's widely believed that's how he came up with this clunky acronym, acronym uh, Rico. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And little history. There. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. And Tim, obviously the mafia had been a problem long before 1970. What mm -hmm. was it about the RICO statute that made it easier for prosecutors to go after these mob families? Well, uh, prior to the RICO statute, it was very hard to charge those in the upper echelons of La Cosa Nostra. Mob bosses were virtually untouchable. There's a famous example. The way the feds took down legendary Chicago mob boss Al Capone wasn't through murder in mayhem counts but tax evasion. That's because mob bosses don't generally carry out crimes, they order them. So until 1970, prosecutors were left going after low-level mob foot soldiers, but the RICO statute allowed the government to pull together all the crimes the minor players were committing, and if they could prove those acts benefited the organized criminal enterprise, then the boss himself could be charged. And of course now we see it has been expanded well beyond those mafia families. Oh, absolutely, no doubt. Today, RICO is used to go after illegal drug operations, after street gangs, um, biker gangs, just about anything where prosecutors can prove laws were broken to further a criminal operation. One thing that really stuck out to me in the latest case against Trump, Rudy Giuliani was named as a defendant. He was the U.S. attorney in Manhattan in the 1980s. You see him here speaking to 12 News at the time. And he was famous then for using the RICO charge to go after the organized crime families in New York, all five of them, and did so very successfully. So I think it's remarkable that he is now facing a RICO case himself. Wow. All right, and Tim will be back on 12 News at 6 with some of the important RICO cases brought here in Rhode Island, including the 2001 indictment of Buddy Cianci, Target 12 investigator Tim White. Thanks for being here. Thank you.